The five worst poses for headshots. Just stop it already. I stumbled upon one of the funniest Instagram pages ever, and it's called Ordinary People Memes. Basically, it takes a terrible headshot photo and adds an innocuous caption like, don't forget about the presentation, or I'm leaving early today. It's brilliant in its stupidity and silliness, but it also highlights how many bad headshots are really floating around out there in the wild. And it got me thinking about some of the common mistakes I see in headshot photography. As I peruse the page, one of the most common mistakes I saw in almost every photo was a person who had been posed in an awkward, uncomfortable way. So today I present to you the five worst poses for headshots and implore anyone who still does this to just stop it immediately for the sake of your clients and the future of humanity. Number one, the hard lean. The hard lean forward not only provides an ample view of the top of the subject's head, but it also has the added benefit of making the entire cranium look larger. And who doesn't want that in their headshot? When I look at a photo like this, I immediately get nervous for the person because it looks like they're about to fall over as they teeter trepidatiously towards me. My gut reaction is to stick my hands out and try and catch them, but like weebles, they seem to wobble but not fall down. This is looking really good. You can say that again. <sighs> this pose not only accentuates the subject's head, which is especially fun if they're bald, but it makes both the subject and viewer feel uncomfortable and slightly queasy. Number two, the hard lean shot from space. The hard lean forward, slightly less offensive cousin is the hard lean shot from space. In this pose from 30 years ago, the client sits in the world's lowest stool while the photographer shoots down on them from the International Space Station. The resulting image has a similar effect to staring through an apartment keyhole with the body of the person appearing comically small in comparison to their head. Looking down on them is probably not the best move for a professional headshot. So here's a pro tip. If they look like they're watching a fly ball as it nears the foul pole, it's probably not a good pose. Number three, the angry shoulder. In the angry shoulder, the most prominent part of the image is the subject's shoulder, which has been angled directly at the camera lens. Even though the person's face is smiling, their shoulder is aggressively pointed directly at you. Now imagine having a conversation with someone who's standing like this. Hey Tim, did you see the big game last night? The angry shoulder becomes more painful to look at when it's combined with an extreme head lean in the opposite direction of the shoulder. This pose combines Finds a unique mix of awkwardness and painfulness to both the subject and the viewer, and it is often exacerbated by a suit jacket with a gigantic 1990s style shoulder pad. The shoulder pad almost takes on a life of its own and diminishes everything about the actual person in the photo who's become not only secondary but tertiary to the photographer's sadistic posing techniques. Number four, the cross my arms, hope to die. Now don't get me wrong, I love a good arm cross just as much as the next photographer, but within reason. For example, if a subject is wearing six to eight layers of clothing, folding their arms has the double non-benefit of making them look both like a wrinkled mess and also much larger than they really are. Two things I know my clients ask for all the time. Folded arms and suits make a great combination especially when we combine the aforementioned comically huge shoulder pads into the mix. There were these huge bins of clothes and everybody was rifling through them like crazy and I grabbed one. Nothing says I'm right for the job more than a collar that's six inches higher than it should be and shoulder pads that now have winged edges created by the folded arms. And then there's the hands which are often contrived in the worst possible ways with fingers splayed across the arm awkwardly which makes it clear in the resulting image that the pose was contrived and forced by a photographer who couldn't think of anything else. Number five, the combo rombo hellscape. Although each of these poses can work independently, the real headshot hellscape is created when one or more of them is combined. <laughs> Nothing says I went to the Sears portrait studio for my headshot more clearly than a hard lean shot from space combined with an angry shoulder and a wicked arm cross. 
In fact, I'm pretty sure if you do combine all four of the above terrible poses and throw in a cloudy sky background and an awkward facial expression, you will rip a hole in the fabric of the universe and release one of those monsters from Stranger Things. So don't even play with that fire, okay? Well, as always, I hope you enjoyed this quick video and learned something. And make sure you're part of the solution by avoiding these five awful poses in your own portrait photography. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Now go out there and take some awesome pictures and I will see you next time. Peace.